Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary, how does it go? The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. Now the unhinged left is endorsing and applauding shooting Republicans. <laughs> when will it stop? It won't if John Ossoff wins on Tuesday. Because the same unhinged leftists cheering last week's shooting are all backing John Ossoff. And if he wins, they win. Stop them. Stop them now. Stop John Ossoff. Stop Nancy Pelosi. Vote Karen Handel for Congress. Vote Principled Leadership Project Pack. Paid for this ad and is solely responsible for its content. Georgia on my mind. Everybody's got Georgia on their mind today, don't we? Yeah, hi, Georgia. Hey, Georgia water. <laughs> yes, everybody has Georgia on their mind. This race should be about jobs and health care and Georgia's sixth, uh, but it's about Donald Trump. Like everything in this world is about Donald Trump. He wouldn't have it any other way. So uh, either way, uh, what we have here is a, uh, a, a house race, $50 million. Can you, I mean, just... Never mind who you're for, okay? Uh, never mind, uh, you know, that you don't live in Georgia. Never mind that we're not part of this, uh, you know, and we're just watching from afar, from a distance. Uh, God is watching all of us. God is watching. Hi, bet. Uh, yeah. $50 million spent on a congressional seat? One stinking little seat in Georgia? That is obscenity. That, you know, the Supreme Court's definition of obscenity is they'll know it when they see it. Uh, if you can look at this and not see obscenity, uh, then you've got a really interesting standard of what is and what is not shameful and obscene. And I would like to know what it is, because $50 million being spent in a congressional race is obscene. The amount of money in our politics is grotesque. What kind of a result could you possibly hope for when there's $50 million and some of it isn't even accounted for because it's coming from the principled leadership pack, who, by the way, I looked up and it seems to me that the principled leadership pack is old Rand Paul staffers. That's who this pack is. And, 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 and you know, uh, Blue North Carolina has got a little expose on this uh, principal leadership pack and this guy that runs it. I don't know. I mean, it's not uh, it's not the best news source I could find. So I don't want to say anything really, really disparaging like he keeps all the money for himself. But, you know, that is kind of what's being alleged here. Not that I am saying that that is true because, uh, you know, if it's not in the mainstream, if it's not fact checked, if it's not, you know. So I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't put my name next to the fact that, uh, you know, he keeps all the money for himself. But um, it is it is an interesting pack. And I mean, just look at all this money. Now, she, Karen Handel, a, a, a world heavyweight champion vote suppressor as Secretary of State of Georgia, who likes to send letters out to American citizens telling them that they're not American citizens and that they're illegals and they can't vote unless they show up at a hearing that has already expired because they're supposed to show up on October 9th, but the damn letter isn't postmarked till October 9th, even though it's dated October 2nd. That's the old fashioned way. You know, now, of course, you know, we just put 198 million voters information on an Amazon server where everybody can see, take your name and, uh, you know, start targeting you with fake news. But OK, so. We have this election that's going on in Georgia. It's obviously a seat that's been in Republican hands since 1979. And everybody's wondering if Donald Trump's teeny tiny, teeny teeny little hands can hold on to this seat as if as if, you know, uh, this is about Donald Trump. It's about health care. It's about jobs. It's about a, a standard of living that Georgians are accustomed to in this district. This is a district where almost well, I won't say everybody, but a great big majority have gone to college. They are educated. They are urbane, uh, but they are reliable Republican voters. And uh, since 1979, this seat has belonged to the likes of, you know, one Newt Gingrich, who needs to come back, as one of our callers said, as a gay, 
uh, Islamic man born in Riyadh, <laughs> trying to get to the United States somehow. Um, and, uh, you know, it's also belonged to Tom Price now, our Health and Human Services Secretary. Just thought I'd refresh from Tom Price's confirmation hearing the type of person that has won this seat prior. Here's a little of the uh, back and forth from his confirmation hearing. You purchased stock in Innate Immunotherapeutics, a company working to develop new drugs on four separate occasions between January 2015 and August 2016. You made the decision to purchase that stock, not a broker, yes or no? That, that was a decision that I made, yes. You were offered an opportunity to purchase stock at a lower price than was available to the general public, yes or no? Uh, the initial purchase in January of 2015 was at the uh, market price. Uh, the secondary purchase in, in uh, June through August, September of 2016 uh, was at a price that was available to individuals who were participating in a private placement offering. That was lower than was available to the general public, correct? I don't know that it was. It was, a, it was the same price that, we had, that everybody paid for the private placement offering. Well, Congressman Chris Collins, who sits on President-elect Trump's transition team, is both an investor and a board member of the company. <laughs> he was repeated, uh, reportedly overheard just last week off the House floor bragging about how he had made people millionaires from a stock tip. Congressman Price, in our meeting, you informed me that you made these purchases based on conversations with Representative Collins. Is that correct? No, what I... What well, I, that is what you said to me in my office. <laughs> what, what I believe I said to you was that I learned of the company from Congressman Collins. Uh, what I recall our conversation was that you had a conversation with Collins and then decided to purchase the stock. No, that's but, not correct. Well, that is what I remember you hearing it say in my office. That's our uh, uh, Health and Human Services Secretary currently. He's the Secretary of Health. Uh, and this is a man who did insider trading. This is a man who talked to another man who was also a congressman who sits on the board of directors of a pharmaceutical company who gave, uh, you know, the, uh, t the another congressman an a inside trading tip. And, uh, you know, you're supposed to put your stuff in a blind trust and you're supposed to have a broker that never calls you uh, do, you know, normal trades for you uh, with your account. And you're not supposed to even look at it or talk to them. Or And here he's admitting that uh, not only did he get an inside tip from another congressman, Congressman, but he acted on it by himself without the broker. So um, here is the Bush White House ethics advisor, Richard Painter. Well, it's a criminal offense. It's insider trading. If you uh, purchase or sell securities uh, while in possession of uh, material non-public information that you learned uh, from uh, your job, whether it's the United States government on Wall Street or anywhere else, and Congress emphasized that again in the Stock Act a number of years ago. So I'm amazed that we'd have a congressman who's buying and selling health care company stocks before introducing bills that affect those very same companies. Shocked. And then the latest excuse I'm hearing is that, well, his broker bought it without him knowing. If that's the story, I'm wondering why a congressman who would set up a discretionary account let his broker be buying and selling health care company stocks while he's uh, introducing legislation that affects health care companies. I mean, this could be, uh, I'm not saying it is criminal insider trading, but it, it looks terrible to have this kind of thing going on uh, by a member of Congress, much less a cabinet nominee. It looks terrible. It looks terrible. I love Richard Payne. I just love the way he sounds exactly the way you would want an ethics advisor to sound. He sounds homespun. He sounds like he's got common sense. He sounds reasonable and he sounds smart. And so... You know, I, I, I just but but it's worse than what Richard Painter actually says there, which he says is also criminal insider trading, that you would instruct your broker to buy and sell uh, pharmaceutical stocks or medical device stocks while you're creating and voting on legislation that affects pharmaceutical prices and uh, medical device uh, prices. But it was worse because uh, he actually testified, Tom Price did, that he was doing it himself that he actually did it himself based on the tip that he got from another congressman who sits on the board of this pharmaceutical company. So that is uh, the kind of, that is the caliber of person that serves uh, you know, at the pleasure of the president currently. That is the caliber. So now you've got this Karen Handel girl who's trying, you know, she's run what, seven, eight, 10, 12, 15 times. Uh, and what's so interesting about her is she's from the outskirts of Washington, D.C., moved to Georgia, and she's saying, Oh, you can't vote for uh, John Ossoff. You can't vote for John because he doesn't live in the district. 
He lives like a block outside the district, but districts are so ridiculously carved up and cut up. And you know the Supreme Court's going to hear a big gerrymandering case uh, to do with Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, I, I just hope and pray that they see how it violates the Equal Protection Clause of our Constitution and has for a very long time. One can only hope, one can only pray. But back to Karen Handel. Karen Handel is accusing John Ossoff and running these, uh, you know, uh, bullet-riddled commercials. When will it stop? When? When will it stop? No mention of Gabby Giffords. No ma- Oh, by the way, uh, they finally did identify. I, you know, I don't really, uh, I don't need to break news. I need to know what the facts are before I talk about a story. So you know all this stuff that happened over the weekend in England uh, with the mosque killing. Uh, People were coming home from uh, Ramadan, uh, late Ramadan prayers, and they were coming out of the mosque, and some guy in a white van rammed into them and killed one guy, and 11 others were sent to the hospital injured, right? Um, and there were rumors, there was, uh, you know, some, uh, some stories about how the driver was screaming, I'm going to kill all Muslims, you know, some such thing. Turns out the guy's name is Darren. <laughs> yeah. His name's Darren Osborne. Uh, and he did say, I want to kill all Muslims. And um, uh, he survived the attack. He was arrested on suspicion of commission, preparation, or instigation of terrorism, including murder and attempted murder. And the camera footage is so fascinating because it shows him being captured by the worshipers. And, uh, you know, they didn't hurt him. They turned him over to uh, the police. They didn't hurt him. They actually helped him and uh, turned him over to the police is what they did. Uh, He was arrested. He was loaded into the back of a police van in handcuffs. And then he had the balls to wave to uh, to the crowd that was gathered there. Turns out his neighbors said, he is a very aggressive and strange man. Um, he, uh, uh, they don't know what he did for work. It's unclear. They, th- they think maybe he bought and sold cars. Uh, that he had called a 12-year-old Muslim neighbor an inbred. He'd been thrown out of his local pub for getting drunk and, quote, cursing Muslims and saying he would do some damage. He's 47 years old, and they are calling it a terrorist attack. Good for you. Now, what's fascinating is no tweets from Trump about this. I didn't see him tweeting about, you know, how he feels terrible, terrible. Uh, You know, and and, and what's very interesting is that they're talking about his uh, Twitter account. So uh, he, he does appear to have had a Twitter account. But he never used it. He just followed people. You know, it's like lead, follow at Randy Rhodes or get out of the way. So he got, you know. He was following, is what he was doing, and he, he, he followed 32 other accounts, including a thing called Paul Golding and Jada Franson, the leaders of the far-right Britain First Party, um, who says that their mission is to restore Christianity as the bedrock and foundation of our national life as it has been for the last 1,000 years. Oh, you think you got beefs in the in the United States, huh? You think you got beefs? These people over there, they're like, uh, you know, they're ready to do, uh, you know, the Protestants versus the Catholics again. I mean, they're ready to go at it. Christianity. So anyway, they said uh, the people who go to his pub very close to his house, they said he got chucked out. He was so drunk. He was cursing Muslims. He said he would do some damage. And he and, and this right wing group uh, that uh, the, the, the South Wales National Front, they said, well, we don't know that he's a member, but anyone with a right mind can see this is not a terrorist attack. This is revenge. Nothing from the president on that, just as, as an aside. So anyway, uh, you've got this big thing in uh, Georgia tonight. We won't know until the polls close. And, uh, you know, then they'll start, uh, you know, pretending to count them. I don't know what we do anymore. Do you? Barring a purple finger, I don't know what to do. I really don't. But Trump is, tw- is tweeting in support of Handel. He started his tweeting uh, yesterday. Nothing about the, uh, you know, mosque attack or in, in all his tweets. Nothing about that. Uh, but a lot about Karen Handel, a lot about her. So at least John Ossoff has that going for him. So good luck to you. Good luck, everybody in Georgia. 
Hope you get your $50 million out of it. $50 million. And be very careful when you vote for Karen Handel because it could be the very last time you are eligible to vote. She just loves to purge those voter rolls. So, um, you know, like I said, in 2008, uh, she started purging. There was a lawsuit that was filed, uh, uh, you know, a month after, uh, a month before the election uh, by people who were purged. And uh, they, they actually won. So if you're voting for Karen Handel, uh, just enjoy it because it could be the very, very last time uh, that you do. All right. 20 after. Go to RandyRhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.